bring you a selection from Beowulf. Ooh. Beowulf is in his middle years, and our once swaggering hero is now trying to play the role of the elder <coughs> statesman. He's advising, warning King Hrothgar that marrying off his daughter to the Hathabard prince will not settle the dispute between their kingdoms. Now, since the setting is Scandinavia, I originally thought to perform this in a northern style of speaking, and since I spent 15 years up in North Shield, don't you know, I know how them Scandinavians talk up there, don't you? So I thought I'd give it a try, you know, but the, the more I worked it up, you know, the, the more it just sounded too much like the Swedish chef. <laughs> it was more oof da than oomph. <laughs> and so, inspired uh, in part by Master Matthias's marvelous turn as Brutus, uh, I reverted to my Anstiorum roots, where I originally uh, grew up. <coughs> uh, so here, Beowulf is addressing Jarl Rothgar and his hall. When that son of the half Dane knew my purpose. <laughs> he found me a place at once on the bench where his own son sat. The throng were joyful. In my whole life, I never saw such mead revelry among house guests. The famous queen, the People's peace pledge passed through the hall, urging her young sons. Often she gave out twisted gold rings before taking the seat. Before the whole things, Rothgar's daughter offered the ale cup to the earls in turn. The floor sitters called her Freywaru. I heard that name when she handed the studded cup to the heroes in that place. Promised is she, gold adorned and young, to the heir of Frodo. The king of the shieldings, the kingdom's keeper, thought to arrange this. He thinks it wise to wed the woman, ward off a feud, set it slaughter. But seldom ever, when fighting is finished, does the feud spear rest, even for the briefest while, though the bride is good. Perhaps he'll be unhappy, the hay the bard's prince, and each battle fane in his band akin, when he walks on the wood with that woman at his side. And noble sons of Danes are received with honor, shining at their waists the wealth of ancestors, hard and ring adorned, Athabard treasures, as long as their hands could hold weapons till their own lives were led to doom with their beloved companions in linden play. Then the old ash war who always remembers all the men's spear death, spies the ring gift, speaks over beer, his spirits grim, sad-minded, he undertakes to test the soul of a young champion. With his innermost thoughts to awaken the war bale, these words he speaks. Can you discern that sword, my friend? That costly iron? It was carried to the fight in your father's hands <laughs> on his final journey of dying in the war mask when the Danes failed him, held the battlefield, when heroes were routed and Vivigild was vanquished with those valley shieldings. Now, one of the sons of the slayers is here, preening with his precious steel, Proudly murder boasted, he walks on this wood, wears the treasure, owns the heirloom, which ought by right be yours. <laughs> At every opportunity, he urges and reminds with cruel word gift till comes a time when the bride's escort, owing to his father's deeds and the bite of a sword, his blood stained in sleep, forfeits his life. His foe at that point escapes alive in country he knows well. Then both factions will break their words. The oath swearing the earls, the anger boils up in Prince Angel. 
Afterward comes a cooling wife love and the waxing of his cares. Thus I expect on the part of the Havabards that the Danish treaty is troubled by deceit and their friendship not fast. Now I've said my piece.